Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Weekends and holidays are the perfect time to catch people off guard. Like a street thug committing a mugging, capital controls blindside most people, otherwise, they wouldn't be effective. The government declares a surprise bank holiday and shuts all the banks, mere hours after they denied they were even thinking about such actions. They impose capital controls to stop citizens from taking their money out of the country. Cash sniffing dogs, which make drug sniffing dogs look friendly, show up at airports and border crossings. At this point, your savings are like a lobster in a trap. It's not hard to see what comes next. Once a desperate government has your money within its reach, it'll find a way to take as much of it as possible. Don't be surprised if your local currency suffers a massive devaluation, bank deposits are suddenly worth a fraction of what they were just yesterday, or the government imposes an emergency tax. Whatever the method or pretext, the outcome is always the same. A wealth transfer from you to the government. This familiar story has played out in many countries in recent years. The pattern is clear and should surprise no one the next time it happens. It's all but certain governments in financial trouble will turn to capital controls as a desperate misguided solution with devastating consequences for ordinary people. Argentina, Lebanon, Venezuela, Iceland, Greece, Cyprus, Turkey, Russia, Ukraine, China, India, South Korea, and governments in countless other countries have recently imposed capital. The lesson from these examples is, capital controls can happen anywhere and anytime. Although it seems unthinkable to most, there is an excellent chance capital controls are coming to the US. They've happened before and could happen again soon. Remember, in 1933, through Executive Order 6102, President Roosevelt forced Americans to exchange their gold for U.S. dollars, under penalty of 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine, or more than $242,000 in today's debased confetti. Of course, the official government gold exchange rate was unfavorable. It amounted to around a 41% confiscation of purchasing power. The U.S. government continued prohibiting private ownership of gold bullion for 41 years until they reluctantly allowed the plebs to own it again in 1974. So, there is a clear historical precedent for implementing capital controls in the U.S., especially during a crisis. Today, it's self-evident the fiat currency system centered on the U.S. dollar is self-destructing at an alarming rate. After more than 52 years, it's long past the end of its shelf life, like a carton of spoiled milk. Even the global elites running the system can't see that and openly talk about what they want to come next. That's why there's all this talk about a great reset, and without a doubt, capital controls will be part of it. All it would take is, a crisis, real or contrived, or some other pretext and the stroke of the president's pen on a new executive order. Expect it to happen. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Capital controls are government restrictions on how people can use their money, something that should be abhorrent to anyone who believes in property rights and a free society. Here's how capital controls work. Governments might allow people to buy foreign currency, or gold, only at an official rate that they set, which is always less favorable than the free market rate. The difference between the fake official rate and the real free market rate amounts to a wealth transfer to the government. 
Another form of capital controls is steep taxes on international money transfers or purchasing foreign assets. Governments could also flat out prohibit ownership of foreign assets or moving any form of wealth outside the country. No matter what flavor they come in, capital controls always help a government trap money within its borders, so it's easier for them to take. A propaganda campaign is also necessary to gaslight people into believing such actions are required to protect the average person. Expect politicians to make disingenuous claims to make them appear as saviors instead of aggressors. The mainstream media will amplify this false narrative and demonize those opposed to capital controls as disloyal citizens, or worse. capital controls are always a prelude to something worse. That's because once governments trap money inside a country, it's probably only a matter of hours before there is wealth confiscation. Anything they don't steal immediately, they box in for future thefts. That's why you must act before they impose capital controls. How much time do you have? Well, it's impossible to know, acting well in advance is advisable. It's better to be a year early than even a minute late. However, there is one common feature I've noticed when countries impose capital controls that indicates the situation is imminent. It's like someone waving a big fat red flag. That warning sign is a government official denying that they are considering imposing capital controls. Whenever you hear a central banker or politician say something won't happen, you can almost be sure it will happen. And probably soon. Coming from a bureaucrat, the real meaning of no of course not, is it could happen tomorrow. It's like the old saying. Believe nothing until it has been officially denied. These deceptions have a purpose. Politicians and central bankers must surprise the public to get the desired results. When you hear the official denial, you probably have only a matter of hours before they impose capital controls. Urgent action is required. The current dollar-based monetary system is on its way out. Even the central bankers running the system can't see that. They are preparing for what comes next as they attempt to reset the system. It's a virtual certainty they will impose capital controls. I suspect it could all go down soon, and it won't be pretty for most people. We are likely on the cusp of a historic financial earthquake. One that could alter the direction of the US forever and mark the biggest economic event of our lifetimes. Yet few people are aware of what is happening. And even fewer know how to prepare. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.